kids, it's the Drive to School podcast, and we're going to talk about some of the things that you're going to see in church this Sunday. It is the second Sunday in Advent. Advent is a season where God shows up. It's wholly devoted to the idea that God is not far away, but he is Emmanuel, God who is with us. You see this in, in three ways. On, on Christmas, God is with us. He is born of the Virgin. He enters into humanity. He becomes man. You see it on the last day when he returns again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and you see it in church where you have communion, the body and blood of Jesus. God advents. He shows up. And that's really good news. Uh, One of the things you might see in church this Sunday is my very favorite Advent hymn, which you should absolutely sing and not just jump right to the Christmas hymns. Um, It's important because they talk about right now. Uh, God advents and we, we look back and we look forward to some one day judgment day. But we have right now needs. And um, if you just jump right ahead to the Christmas songs, I know it feels good because it's sort of that nostalgic feeling. You can think back to simpler times of your childhood or how much simpler the world must have been without all the politics, like evil kings trying to murder all of uh, the children ages two and under. No, it was bad then too. It was terrible. Guys, we need help. We need God to Advent. So we're going to sing um, my very favorite Advent hymn, O Savior, Rend the Heavens Wide. Well, we're not going to sing it, but you might sing it this Sunday in church. It's one wonderful because it's it's violent. It's it's wonderful because it's it's a confrontation of everything that God has promised with a world that looks like this and we who dwell down here in toil and and trouble, we who struggle to to maintain hope in the darkest of days no matter how bright the Christmas tree shines. Oh savior, rend the heavens wide. Come down, come down with mighty stride. Unlock the gates, the doors break down. Unbar the way to heaven's crown. God kick the doors in because we cannot climb our way up to heaven. If we could figure out how to escape this place, we sure would, but we are stuck. And so when God enters into humanity, he does not sneak in the back door. He kicks open the door. He breaks down the locks. He leaves it with the the, the, the place between earth and heaven to be something that, that cannot bar us from going up to God anymore. O oh, Father's light from heaven send as morning dew, O oh, sun descend. And drop down you clouds the life of spring to Jacob's line rain down the king that God would enter into humanity through Jacob's line the promise that was made to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob this is who we realize in Jesus and Jesus enters into this world not a perfect world not a, a nostalgic world not a world where everything was better and he won't just wait until things are better to come back again we have a God who promises to come to us here and now uh, stands of four is wonderful oh font of hope how long how long when will you come with comfort strong? O come, O come, your throne forego. Console us in our veil of woe. It's dark down here. How long? It's, it's actually a, a wonderful, wonderful thing to actually hold God to his promises even when you're not seeing it. How long? Because you promised. You promised not to leave us here like this. How long? Because you promised things would be better because you died and rose again. How long? Until you return this last great day. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would Forgo your throne and console us in the veil of woe. We have a God who advents in your church. No matter how dark things are in the world, in your life, no matter how much you want to cry this Christmas season because of loss, because of failure, because of sin, because of shame, yours is the God who leaves the throne of heaven to console you, to, to offer you a new identity in your baptism. You are not what people have done to you. You are not what you have done to yourself. You are not what you have done to others. This is not a Ghosts of Christmas past story where you hopefully learn a better lesson and go forward making better choices. This is a God leaving heaven to collect you and bring you to himself. And if you're not there yet, that just means that God is going to have to come to earth to get you. And he does. You go to church for communion. That is his body and his blood. That, that God is actually present in church in a meaningful way. Not a weak wish we could go back and meet you way, but a he comes to us to meet us kind of way. And when God shows up in your church to meet you, he does it to forgive you your sins. He does it to wash you and make you holy, to give you a new identity that is worthy of love, to bring you a joy that can sustain even tears and woe and sadness because yours is the victory over everything that has you down right now. Sin's dreadful doom upon us lies. Grim death looms fierce before our eyes. O come, lead us with a mighty hand from exile to our promised land. God, Advent, come, Lord Jesus, show up and save us. And there shall we all our praises bring and sing to you, our Savior King. There shall we lodge you and adore forever and forevermore. I love this hymn because here we have a God who shows up in a, in a violent way because things are not okay. 
and you're allowed to say that things are not okay. Christmas is not just to pretend everything's fine and we'll just get through the season and then go back to, you know, how dark January is. Christmas is a God becomes man in this world to redeem us, to be with us us to be with you, to forgive you, and to save you from this world and even from yourself. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.